everyone who sent in your bluebells, we loved it. I don't know if Elizabeth goes down. Can you see I've got a helper here today? Um, today we are going to do Toad from Mario. And the reason for that is because we have just had so many requests. So I got my pencils out this week and had a play designing Toad. So let's get drawing. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, we're going to start this toad. It's got the, the most enormous head. So this is just my scrap of paper that I'm going to just do a bit of warm up, get my arm going. So just start with some lovely loose circles. Now, when I actually do the circle, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to give myself some, some um, dots to work between. And I'm going to go like this. But what I want you to be thinking about is when you're doing this circle, not going like this. But instead, can you really see the difference there? So just have a practice. Show yourself the difference between pressing hard and a lovely soft. And then think about where you're putting your fingers. So on your, on your warm-up paper, just a few circles, just to get you thinking about quiet, gentle lines. All right, let's start drawing. Okay, so I'm really excited because this has just been delivered to me. We're now selling these in our little art school shop. It looks like a um, spiral bound notebook, but look what's inside. This is so exciting. It's actual watercolor paper and it's all held together like this. This is perfect and it's so thick. It's such good quality paper, this now, that you can use this both sides. So you don't need to just use one side of it. You can use both sides of it. You could flood that with water and it will not um, wrinkle. That's such good paper. So I am going to draw in my new notebook today because I'm really excited about it. So we're going to start off by thinking about just over halfway above the page. So if that's halfway, I'm going to go just slightly. That's going to be my bottom of this huge thing, which is the hat. I don't know what really what these it up things are, this toad thing is. I, I don't know anything about Mario except that my sons play it. So I'm going to start like that and then join it up. It looks like a massive mushroom. Elizabeth, do you know anything about these things? His name's Toad. His name's Toad. Is it a massive mushroom for a head? Mm. No, we it don't know. Like, it looks like it. We don't know, but this we have had so many requests for this. I think we've had more requests for this than anything. Um, so I've, look, I'm going to go back. And because my first marks were so light, um, that makes it fine. But all I want is that sort of shape. And then if you've got any bits that aren't quite right, don't worry. Because your marks were so light, you can go in and rub them out. So that's the first shape especially from dune foot p5 i have to say who i have a very special place in my heart because i go in there a lot but uh dune foot p5 we're asking for this one so if we go underneath there like that and it's a half circle now i'm gonna put in the half circle this will form his face so get the half circle in coming from the half circle we're narrowing it down here and i just want two small lines all this when you pause it all this will be on on the um the pause sheet so a line across there and then we're going to come out just a bit and we're going to curve that round lots of curves in this start here lots and lots of curves so it's just those simple shapes start with that make sure you don't take it further down from the bottom halfway up from halfway then the semicircle, two lines down, and here, that's your first shapes. Okay, so we're gonna start off by putting these two bits in the side. These are gonna be colored red. So I just want you to, at each side, just two bits like that. You're cutting them off there. And then we've got another circle here. So just down from the top, it's quite big this and go right out with this circle can you see how loose i'm keeping my marks how loose and soft so then i can go back in and rub out any that i don't want keep your rubber handy here because what i want you to do is to rub this bit out so that's the bit when you go into the when you pause at the draw now bit you'll see that this bit was a red dotted line we want to get rid of that we're going to take it up here up here and then it's not a straight line it's a very slight curve there like that okay 
And then this line here, we're going to rub that one out as well. And we're going to bring it down. It's some kind of little waistcoat there. One. And then down there for the second one. And we're just going to finish this stage off with the two feet. So they're quite large and again, very rounded, lots of curved lines, not many straight lines in this in this drawing at all. So we're going to finish it off there like that. So if you pause, catch up with that, and then we'll come back and we'll finish the last bits. Okay, so we're going to come in and pop in the eyes. The eyes are quite long. So I would start with two lines and then join there like that. And again, one line, one line, then a curve and a join. If they don't feel like they're the same size, mine aren't, just take it up slightly. There's no nose, but what we do have is directly under the eyes, we've got a little line there, a little line there, and then this big smile. Okay. Now, if we come down here, we've got a little line there, and now we're going to put the arms in. Now, don't overthink these at all. You just come out like that, and then take a little angle there. And where we've got that line, we must have come in one, two. So it's like two curves there. And then you can rub that little line out there. All this is on the guide sheet, so when you pause it, you'll be able to see how to do it. And then just go one, two, three, the little hand. So that's one arm done. This one's even simpler. We're just going in with one rounded bit there and then a small shape there like that. Now we've got one last thing to finish it off. There's a sort of stripe here on the waistcoat. So we'll come in there like that and the same there. And that's it, that's finished. Now, if you've got paints, hang on and keep watching, stay with us, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some different paint techniques that will really make this picture come alive. If you've got pens, if you've not got paints, but you've got felt tips, crayons, coloring pencils, whatever, you go and uh, color it in and make sure you send your pictures to us. We would love to see them. Okay, so I'm going to mix it up here. I'm going to try a few different things. You could do the whole lot with paints. You could do the whole lot with watercolour pencils. I'm going to do a bit of both. I'm going to do a bit of watercolour pencils. And I'm going to do a bit of paints. So I'm going to start with this grey watercolour pencil here. And although this is white, it's not going to show up against the white paper unless we put a bit of shadow in. And all the pictures that I've seen do seem to be quite shadowed. So I'm just coming in at the top here. And I'm going to put um, a little bit of shadow there. If you can hear a noise, it's just our dog. He's decided to come in and have a little drink. Um, here we go. And I'm going to go around there with the grey as well. And there. I'm not going to touch the side bits because they're going to be um, red. I'm going to take my brush on this grey watercolour pencil. And I'm just going to touch it. Can you see I'm just touching to get that pigment? It's really subtle, this. Just touching it to get the bit of pigment and then I'm bringing it round. Here like that. Okay. And I'm going to do the same at this bottom bit. I'm just going to touch it and get the pigment. <coughs> okay, and bring it out slightly. Just so that I've got this kind of almost like a small shadow. Okay. All right, and we're going to pause it now, not because we need to, but because we need to let the dog out of the room before he starts barking. And I'm going to do the same here with the grey, just touches of it around this bottom bit there. So I'm just dampening the grey pigment taking it a little bit in. Now, if you're working on a paint palette here, all you would do is mix in a little gray paint, which is lots of water and a, just a touch of black or just a touch of your gray. And you can um, create a little gray and do the same 
thing there. Right, now we're going to take the red and we're going to put these details in the outside. So I'm just going to come in like that. And we're going really quite heavy on the pigment here because I want it to be nice and strong this. I want this, this red to really jump out. And the same here. Now, when I was um, designing this, just having a practice with it, what I found was a really good way of keeping that very strong, sharp edge there that we want on this red, is that I went with my brush just round the inside. Can you see I'm not going right to the edge there? By just going round the inside there, I've left that strong, sharp pencil mark around the edge, which will make it look really neat. And then it's very easy to change the middle bit to paint pigment. And I'm going to do the same there. I'm going to go around the edge. I'm going to miss the edge slightly and keep those strong marks. Oh, it's really starting to look like it's supposed to now. It's such a distinctive thing, this, whatever he's wearing on his head. Right, so we've got that bit in and then the next thing I'm going to do while I'm waiting for that to dry I don't want to start working on the skin until that's dry so I'm so often when you're doing this just move around rather than painting the thing right next to it you, whilst you're letting that dry you can move on and do another bit and I'm just going to turn these shoes I'm using a very reddish brown here for this which is called burnt sienna it's such a lovely color lots of paint colors are named after Italian places you've got and um, burnt sienna and raw sienna and raw umber and oh paint colors have the most beautiful names and at little art school we always try to use the proper names we always try to call them cerulean blue and a lizard crimson and um it adds a bit of poetry to painting so there we go i'm just turning those into paint and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to mix myself a very sort of pale skin colour, and I'm going to do that using these paints. Now, if I were to do it with my watercolour pencils, and these were what I had, what I would do is very lightly use a bit of uh, yellow, and I'd add a touch of red, and that's actually how I'm going to do the Mario, um, the Super Mario, the next one. But with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here, I'm going to mix up some water in there for a wash, touch of yellow. We've done this on a few of them now. We did it on Alice in Wonderland. We did it on mm -hmm. Elizabeth and I are trying to remember now all the ones we've done over the last three weeks. There's so many. So just a touch of yellow and a touch of that Elizabeth and Crimson there. Let's see, it's a bit orangey. I might go with a touch more. A touch more water is what it needs, really. Let's test that. A little bit more to make it pink. Got to be really careful not to go too far but that's about right it looks really orangey doesn't it on the palette when we test it on the paper we can see it's the right color and i'm going to get a nice wet brush and i'm going to go here all right the gray bit's dry now so that's fine to do that there and it actually comes right down to there that's where we're going to take the skin color and you can see it's just although i put very little paint and I was so subtle with the paint colour. It's You can actually go over the eyes if you want to. I'm going to go around them, but you can go over them. And the watercolour paper means that this will sink in, it won't buckle. Very happy with the new pads. There we go. And then let's go in and paint his arms as well. There's only a touch there on that side. We've got that and a little hand coming down. Now, if you feel like it, your paint's pooling a bit and there's too much, all you do is look, it's a bit of magic. Touch your watercolour paper, to your um, kitchen roll to it. And it sort of sucks it up. There we go. Right, so whilst that's drying, We'll just have a little pause. I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to come back and finish it. Okay, I'm going to come in now. My skin colour's dry. I'm going to put in this blue shape here, which is makes up the blue of his watercolour, uh, of his waistcoat. Now, I'm pressing quite hard to get lots of pigment down. And I can change that to paint. 
there really quickly with my brush. Won't take long, there we go. And whilst that's drying, before I go in to put my yellow, I'm gonna put in the eyes. Now, leave, put in a dot there. I'm using a fine liner pen, but you could use a black felt tip. You can use whatever you um, have handy. Black watercolor pencil will do it, black colored pencil. But the key is to make sure you leave that little highlight in. Can you see what difference that makes? I might have done it slightly too big, but it is important. So pop in the eyes. We're almost there with this. I wonder how many people are going to do this and Mario. So if you finish this and you're thinking, I've got a bit of spare time on Saturday, why not do Mario as well? There we go. So we've given him a big smile. There's just one thing left to finish him off. Now, one way you could finish him off, you could... Use your yellow pencil and go around his face a little just to give him a bit of definition. But also this yellow pencil needs to come in and do this bit here. Now, because my blue's not dry, I'm leaving a small gap. And you can either just leave it like that or you can turn that to paint as well. But that is our finished toad. I hope you loved it. enjoyed that and apparently there are other other of these toads you can look at I'm not an expert I'm just going to say that but the, Elizabeth just found a pink one called Toadette so maybe you could have a go at that one as well um we will be back next week we've got a whole week of wonderful drawings lined up for you so they're going to be available from 11 o'clock every day and if there are any that you missed over the Easter holidays and R2D2 and Olaf and Alice in Wonderland have a look back through the YouTube site over the weekend and maybe you could do some of those, but we will see you 11 o'clock on Monday for the Daily Draw.